Good morning, Facebook friends. Happy New Year to all of you. It's so good to see uh, 15, 20 of you all lined up in the waiting room to watch our service today. I know we're extending far and wide. We've got a couple uh, that are usually here with us in service that are watching from Arizona, Bill and Carol. We say hi to you this morning, and uh, we're glad that you made it there safely and uh, looking forward to having a, a good week out there and a good uh, trip back this week as well. We just praise God for our new year, and we hope and pray that your uh, New Year's celebrations were, uh, were peaceful and calm and uh, you've, you've made it into the new year in good order. And a little bit of snow out there today. We don't know how our crowd's going to be in-house here. But if you're uh, usually here and you're watching online, we welcome you too. We're just thrilled to be able to worship God starting this new year, 2021. We uh, have no idea what the year holds, but we know who holds it. And that's our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So welcome today. And uh, we're going to be having communion as uh, part of our service today. If you've got your elements prepared, uh, your juice and, and your bread, feel free to observe along with us. Our prayers that we offer here will extend to, uh, to bless the elements that you have prepared at your home. So God bless you. Kick back. Uh, not next week, but the week after will be our third Sunday sing. So be thinking about your favorites. And uh, you, you'll be able to, you know, uh, maybe suggest those to us. And we'll sing some of your favorites online as well. Again, welcome. Happy New Year. We're looking forward to what God is going to do here at St. John's and in Crown Point this week. Welcome tonight. We'll see you in just a few minutes. Seven minutes. Eight minutes. Are you sure?
just enough snow to mess things up, and, uh, but we're glad that you're here, and the parking lot is plowed, and uh, the road, most of the roads are clear. Our trip here from, <clears throat> from Munster this morning wasn't, uh, wasn't all that bad, so we're just thankful for all of that. Everybody have a good, uh, uh, a good new year? Yeah. Yes. Good, good. I'm right, thankful for that, and we've got... Uh, Got a lot going on, a lot of, uh, a lot of announcements. Gil's got a, some announcements for us today. So we want to welcome you. If you do are watching online, you've got prayer requests, be thinking about those. Put those uh, in the comments, and Kathy will pick up on those here in just a little bit. So welcome today. Morning. Happy New Year. Can you hear me, Chuck? Good. It's going to be first time visitors in person or online this morning. Even if you're watching this, it's Recording later in the week, please comment if this is your first time so we can honor you as our special guest. Amen. Our next church workday is Saturday, January 9th at 8.30. Be sure to check the calling club names today. Each week, three random names will appear under our calling club section in the bulletin. Reach out saying hi to encourage our friends with a call or a card. Now those names this week, Gail, are uh, Jerry Niemeyer, Debbie Diddy, and John Jewett. So if you uh, are able to, to, to reach out to those, as Gail has just said this week, uh, I'm sure they'd appreciate the word of encouragement hearing from you. Thank you. Revelation Bible Study continues online only. We'll resume next week on January 13th. Our next third Sunday sing will be January 17th, Be Thinking About Your Favorites. Pastor Wendell will start a sermon series entitled Follow the Cross as we begin the new year. In person and online, let's make 2021 count for Christ. Amen. Amen. Any other announcements that we need to make or fail to make or you think we should make? Slide, please. All right. 
and speak now and forever hold your peace, right? All right, thank you. They think it's an auction. They're afraid if they raise their hand, they're going to have to buy something. Or put them to work. <laughs> uh, put them to work, that's it. That's it. All right, thank you. Okay, please rise for the call to worship. It's the Apostles' Creed in the front of your hymnal. I believe in God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the one holy universal Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Our first hymn is number 452, Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus. Amen. You can't sit down on that one. But if you need to, we'll look the other way. 452, let's do the first and the last verse. Stand up, stand up for Jesus.
be seated. Let me mask up here real quick. We'll get our kids in waiting. guys are welcome to if you want. I think we got it covered though. All right. We can have a, a, a collector per person. different year than this past year has been. Yeah, I want to give a special hello. I heard that Bill and Carol Jensen are having breakfast with Don and Ann Lotz this morning, so hello to you guys in Arizona. Okay, this morning is from Joshua 1, verses 1 through 9. God commissions Joshua. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all people, into the land that I am giving to them, to the people of Israel. Every place that the soldier foot will tread upon, I have given to you, just as I promised to Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites to the great sea, toward going down of the sun, shall be your territory. <coughs> No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous, for you shall cause this people to inherit the land that I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and courageous, being careful to do according to all the law that Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and you will then have good success. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous, do not be frightened, and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Happy New Year. Amen. Amen. Gail, thank you so much. Uh, as Gail said earlier in announcements, uh, for the next six weeks or so, uh, we'll be doing the message series that I put together called Follow the Cross. Follow the Cross. And uh, I, I think you know, we've used the analogy that there's no safer place to be if you're hiding behind you know, God's, God's hand in your life to be right there. And if, if we're hiding right behind God uh, and, and the cross is covering us as, as, as it ought to, I mean, we drift off to the right or to the left a little bit, uh, we're, we're fair game for, for the enemy. He gets to take pot shots at us. But if we're right where God wants us to be behind him, we'll follow that cross and let uh, Jesus lead us. Our lives will be blessed and full and rich in so many aspects that uh, and, and blessings to follow. So as we start this series today, just, uh, just, just for a little bit here, we, we, we want to encourage you. This is our first Sunday of the new year. I've tried uh, 
for several of you. You know, I said, uh, this is the best weekend that I've had this year, you know, and uh, this is why I'm not a stand-up comedian, because a joke went right over several heads. And, uh, but, but this is an opportunity we have as we start a new year. You know, so many folks make resolutions and they wipe slates clean and things like that. And, and that's, that's the way we want to think. I mean, whatever it was is, is gone and we have this moment today. We have this moment moving forward by God's grace to do God's will as he has empowered us. And you're here today for a reason. You're watching online for a reason today. And we want you to know that Jesus loves you. He has a plan for your life, and he wants to equip you to make a difference for him. That's what 2021 needs to be all about in our lives, is how can we serve Jesus this coming year? And I think that's what this series is, is all about, Follow the Cross, because it's a special series, series designed to help you reflect and encourage you to know that God has got your back. God has got your back. Every single, time, every single time he's got your back, he wants to lead you, he wants to guide you, he wants to direct you. And even when we think things uh, have, have gone in the hopper, so to speak, he is there for us. He's there for us. And we can even learn from adversity in our lives. So the question to you this morning is, based upon uh, the message here, the formula for courage where do you go? Where do you turn for courage in your life? Where do you go to strengthen yourself for everything that you must face? Now, any given day, any given week, any given month, in the case of the past year, any given year, those circumstances may change. I remember when I was going through some really deep waters in my life that... Uh, and I began to think about the circumstances, the situations that were really weighing down on me. And uh, I just tried to encourage myself in God's word because I had heard a message at that, that point in time, and I believe the message was from God. The minister preached and he said, happiness is a choice, not dependent upon my daily circumstances. I like that saying so much that uh, I was making the trip to and forth back uh, downtown every day, uh, Perry, on, uh, on the train. And on my monthly train ticket, I wrote that saying on each month from, from there going forward. So every time I would put that train ticket for the month in the slot there, I would see that and I would be reminded that happiness was a choice no matter what that day held for me, that I could choose to be happy in the Lord. And you've got that same opportunity. We've got that same opportunity as a church, as a people, to find our hope in the Lord. We can choose, choose to follow him and choose to be happy in him. Now, I'm not, not going to stand here and tell you that everything that's going to go on in your life or my life for this coming year is going to make us, quote, unquote, happy. It's not going to make us smile. There's going to be things that are going to make us sad. But, but whatever the things are, we can draw close to God and we can know that he is there to comfort us, that he's there to guide us, and he's there to direct us. And if we'll follow him, it will work out according to his will. But the key part is that word follow. Follow. We need to follow him. I need to follow him. We as a people we need to follow him. Whatever difficulties you and I have faced, if we follow God's word, if, if, if we make ourselves available to God's word, Jesus will prove himself to us each and every day. He will faithfully lead us in the way that we need to go. The scripture the Gale has just read is God was commissioning Joshua after the death of Moses to lead his people into the promised land. God tells Joshua several times here, you know, be strong and be courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law. God gives us his book, his by this Bible for a reason. And it's uh, 
It's, it's not to be a paperweight. on a table in our house somewhere. It's to be opened. It's to be read. It's, it's to be examined. It's to be loved. It's God's word to us. It's God's love letter to us. And he wants us to develop a relationship. God wants to have an intimate relationship with us through his word. And his word, we can sink into our hearts. His word, we can develop in our hearts. And if we want to have a good 2021 we just need to saturate our souls with the word of God. We need to take time to, to ask him, you know, when we're reading his word, if, if something confuses us, ask the master teacher, the Holy Spirit. You know, say, you know, Lord, I, the Spirit, I, I don't understand this. Can you help me understand this? It may not happen like that, but God will bring some circumstances or situations in your life where, where maybe there'll be some clarification on whatever's confusing you. I know he's done that with me. He's done that with me. But we've got to earnestly ask. We've got to earnestly want, want to grow that relationship with God. Letting that scripture sink into our hearts. Letting it become a way of living. We get back to that age-old thing here. You've heard me say from this pulpit over the past five years numerous times. I don't have religion. I've got a relationship with Jesus Christ. And if I will live according to his law, as he was challenging Joshua to do, it becomes a way of life. I do right things because I want to please God. I say right things because I want to please God. I, it becomes a way of living. It's just like, and you know, Lord will tell you, is, 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 is someone who plays a musical instrument. You know, when we look, when we look at the music and to play, we don't, th we don't see the notes and our minds don't say, see, well, oh, there's an E flat, there's a B flat. And we don't then just, when you see it, you just know what it is. And your mind goes to your hands and, and you just play it. You don't think the process through. And that's the way scripture can be for us if we hide God's words on our heart. When there comes a situation or a time when we need to make choices between right and wrong, if we've got God's word behind us, if we've got those places of courage in his word where we can go, we know his truth will become a way of life for us. That's what he wants for us. That's what he wants. He doesn't want, to, want us to have to think about it. He just wants us to do what's right because it's part of his law. That's what he was telling Joshua here. Be strong, be courageous, know what you're going to do before it happens because invariably there'll be choices that each one of us has to make through this year. Choices that determine right and wrong. And you'll have to make those choices. I'll have to make those choices. So we need to, as we need to overcome the fears that the devil is going to throw at us. We need to overcome the, the fears of inadequacy. We need to overcome the fears of discouragement and just uh, fears of rejection. Satan will throw those at us this coming year. He tells me all the time, you're not good enough. I mean, it's not like he's telling me anything I don't already know. But, but he'll tell each one of us that. You're not good enough for that task. You're not good enough for that church, he'll tell me. You're not good enough. And he, he, he'll tell me things, and these, he'll, he'll bombard me with these things. But those things, instead of discouraging me, me, those things will drive me to go to the Word of God to see what God says about me. When he does the same thing with you, I want it to drive you to the word of God to see what God says about you, to see how important you are, to how much he loves you and how much he wants to encourage you and how as he's telling Joshua here, how he wants you to be courageous because he's giving you his word to stand up to whatever 2021 throws at you. Now, I know we're young in the year already, but I've already heard several people say, well-meaning, of course, well, I'm sure I'm glad that year is over. It can't get any worse. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> that 
that's a recipe for disaster, saying something can't get any worse, you know? It, uh, it, it can. It can. I'm not looking for it to. I'm looking for things to improve. I'm praying things improve. But, you know, where, where, where something might improve in one area, then it might slip in another. We just never know. As the old song goes, I may not know about tomorrow, but I can know who holds it. I know who holds it. I know that if I will invest myself in his word, if I will get intimate with God and just get to know him in a way that I have never known him before for this coming year, that he'll direct my paths. So whatever the year holds, whether it's good, whether it's bad, whether it's indifferent, whether it's about the same, he is there for me. He is there for you. And he wants to make a difference in our lives and our ministry to each other and to our families. Interacting with him through his word, through his prayer. And I find this one to be one of the biggest ones for me, just, just being real with God. You know, I, I can fool you in a lot of areas. You can fool me in a lot of things. And we can, we can think each other are the best things since sliced bread, as Grandma used to say. But you know, ain't none of us fooling God. We need to be transparent before God in all things in our lives and, and, and just, just follow him. Follow his direction. Follow his leadership. Follow him as he was commissioning Joshua because he knows, bottom line is, he knows me. He knows you. And I can't bluff him. I can't fool him. This isn't a, a cosmic poker game or anything. God wants our best and he just wants us to be real with him. I find when I'm real with God is the times in my life when I've been the most successful because I'm following him. I'm following that cross and doing the things that he wants me to do, how he wants me to do them. Sometimes I want to get ahead of God. I want to do this or I want to do that. I want to do it my way, you know, and, and that's never a good reason. I'm going to ask myself starting this year, do I respect the Lord enough to wait on him in his timing sometimes? Do I respect the Lord? Do I trust him? When we use that word respect, it has an element of trust in it. Do I trust the Lord enough to know if the timing of a situation to do such and such for him, something where we want to step out and do, if it's not right, do I trust him to wait? Do I trust him to wait? Have you ever counseled a family member, a friend, a son, a daughter? Someone, they say, well, you know, the timing on this. You can go, well, I think maybe you need to wait. You know, all the building blocks aren't there. You know, this thing is just not the way that you're seeing it one way, but I'm seeing another side. We've got to trust God sometimes to just, just wait. And we'll know that when he opens that door, that there will be an opportunity there, and he will be with us through that opportunity. But that if we go through without him, we're going through on our own. And I know from personal experience when I do things on my own, they end in disaster if God is not in them. Always wait on God. Make sure. Make sure. And I find, too, we've talked about God's word and the importance of God's word and being courageous as he's commissioned Joshua here. I find some most important battles that I have fought and that you and I will fight together in 2021 will be battles that we'll fight on our knees. We'll fight on our knees as we kneel in prayer to God. As we kneel in prayer, we get down and we get serious with God. Whether it's beside our bed at home or a couch or our kitchen table, wherever it is, as we bow our head, as we get serious with God in prayer, praying over prayer lists and our bulletin, our emails, for, for our friends and for our families, those that we need to make a difference in their hearts and lives, and those that we want to see God make a difference in. It's an honor that he can use us. But this coming year, that's our challenge. That's our formula for courage. Focusing on God's words, focusing on our time in prayer, fighting those battles on our knees. So 
So one of my one of my pet peeves over the years was, and you, you've probably heard this, you may have used this, and I'm not not condemning you for using it. But there comes a situation in time where people will say, well, all we can do is pray. And it, it runs through me because the best thing we can do is pray. It should be the first thing that we do is pray. But the world sees prayer as just that absolute last resort. In football, they would call it the Hail Mary, you know, or the throwing it to the end zone. Well, you know, all else is everything that we've tried to do has failed, so let, let's pray now. All we can do is pray. That's not where we're going with this. God wants to take it to take it to him firsthand. Whatever the needs are, whether the circumstances, situations for a job, you know, a family member, a family situation, whatever it is, God wants us to bring it to him firsthand. He never gets tired of hearing from us. It never gets old with him. Because he wants to know that you're following. He wants to know that your heart is in tune with him. He never tires of hearing your needs or my needs today. If we will do that, if we'll spend time in the word, if we'll spend time on our needs, we will reap what we sow because we're sowing good things to the Lord. We're sowing good seeds. And, and the efforts and the time that we're investing in the lives of others, in our own lives, through study and prayer, will bear fruit so that more and more people can get exposures to the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, there are those circumstances sometimes where in each of our lives, we may be walking the walk, we may be talking the talk, and this could be a year that, you know, just some unspeakable tragedy comes into our lives. We know the Bible tells us that it rains on the just and the unjust. Modern day translation of that is everybody has problems. They come, they come. But when problems come, that's when we know, when adversity comes in our lives, that's when we know what we are made of and who we are made from and for. And that's when he points us in the direction we need to go. And we look to him. So when, when adversity comes, you never know what it could be. I mean, it could be financial, it could be physical, it could be spiritual. We never know where adversity will, will come from. But we know who holds tomorrow. We know that all things belong to him. And we know that even though it may not be easy to get through, God will be with us every step of the way. Adversity can be God's bridge to a deeper relationship with him. He reminds us that he's the one who fights for us and provides for us. You can put your faith and trust in him for this year, 2021. He will not fail you. As we go through this year, I guarantee you this is going to happen. I guarantee you between you and between me as your pastor, we're going to have some disappointments. We're going to have some disappointments. They are inevitable. They're inevitable. But disappointments are one thing, discouragement is another. I may disappoint you, you may disappoint me, others may disappoint us, but we, we, we have a choice whether we let that discourage us or not. We've come full circle from that saying that I wrote on my, my train ticket. Discouragement, happiness in the Lord is a choice, not dependent upon my daily circumstances. It's a choice that I have to make, that you have to make, that we as a church have to make. It's a choice. We can either let discouragement drag us down or we can choose to stand upon the word of God. We can choose to kneel before him and pray our way through it with him, getting to know God and what answers he might have for us to navigate Whatever the storm is that we're in, he's there for us. 
He's there for us. So as we encounter delays, obstacles, and events that appear to throw us off course, as we start 2021 off in the house of God, let's purpose in our hearts to serve him, to serve him with faith, with hope, and with love, because he will never fail you. He'll never fail me. He'll never fail you. He wants us to make a difference. So climb on board as we follow the cross here for these next few weeks, and we encourage ourselves in the Lord in this new year. Now, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, if you're watching online for the first time or watching this in recorded format, won't you admit to God right now? I mean, talk to God in prayer. Prayer is just asking and speaking with God. He's always there. He wants to hear you. If he's convicting you, if you're concerned enough about your soul to speak to him, God will hear your prayer. Will you admit to him that you're a sinner? Will you believe that God sent Jesus Christ to die on a cross like, like the one behind me for your sins? If you'll believe that and confess your sins to him, he says he'll save you from your sins. As the same Bible tells us, the wages, the cost, the price of sin is death, but the gift of God, the gift being Jesus Christ, that baby in the manger from a few weeks ago, is God's gift. From the manger to the cross. Do you know him today? If not, you can. You can ask him to forgive you of your sins. And the Bible says that if you'll call upon his name, faith believing, he will save you from your sins. That's how we can walk with him. Through 2021, that's how we can be faithful. That's how we can make a difference. Will you do that today? If you've not done that online, just send a note. Pastor, I'd like to know more. We'll reach out to you privately. We'll help you understand according to God's word. Not what I believe or what the church believes or anything like that. We'll show you what the Bible says. We'll show you what God says. We can face 2021 knowing we're following the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's give him his proper praise as we start this new year. Uh, stand with me real quick. We're going to sing uh, page number 63. If you're able to stand fine, if not, that's okay too. Praise him, praise him. The first and the last verse, Laura. One and three.
Don had posted on the church Facebook page last night. Uh, I, I had never met this gentleman, but uh, uh, I guess he was a former choir director here at St. John's. Uh, uh, John Metz, John Metz, I believe he lived, is currently living in Phoenix, but he passed away uh, on the 28th. So if you, is a show of hands, who, who, who knew John uh, from here? Okay, you guys knew him, a couple other, some of our, uh, some of our more mature members, let's put it that way. Uh, but uh, so, so be much in prayer to the family of John Metz. Uh, I don't have any uh, arrangements or anything like that. Uh, he died on the 28th of December, so it could already have happened, I guess, actually. But uh, remember John's family in prayer uh, as we go forward. All right. Other requests from you this morning? Other requests? Irene? This is so the job will be located in Vermont? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Living circumstances are always a priority, that's for sure. That's for sure. Let's pray for Kim as she makes the transition here from answered prayer to the reality of. Of, of, of the circumstance and the situation. So let's pray for her. Let's. When is there a time frame on this? Is when uh, this starts? Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. All right. So let's really be diligent here, praying for Kim as uh, as this is all unfolding around her and little Seth. Amen. Thank you, Ari. All right. Who else? Who else? Kathy, you got some? Prayers for Betty. Her son is in Kentucky that's on the kidney list in uh -huh. the hospital with COVID. Okay. And the lot is regardless, Phil and Cheryl, and they did mention John Betts. And Bobby Brooks' sister is home and recovering. Okay. Bobby Brooks, her sister's name is Christine Joseph. She uh, had a heart attack this past week down in Florida. So we are thankful that she is home and recovering. Praise God for that. All right. Who else? Who else? Chris? My friend Betty Weaver, who had the stroke. Uh-huh. She now has COVID. Oh, boy. So she's kind of fighting it. Betty Weaver, COVID. All right. Let's continue to pray for Betty. Who else? Who else? If you have updates on anybody that you've asked prayer for previously, you know, Please let, let us know, because we like to try to keep our list, uh, uh, I guess the phrase is refresh our list with new information, and uh, if someone is better off or, or worse off, we want to know that uh, as well, as well, so we can pray accordingly. All right. We've got several unspoken requests. Are we uplifting hands? Okay. God sees your hands and hearts. Let's take time out. We've got so many... Uh, that have carried over from the new year. Our, our cancer part uh, is, is full. For, we're praying for many with, with cancer. We're praying for uh, oh, just other circumstances. And this COVID thing is just, uh, it just doesn't want to seem to go away. But we're, uh, we're, we're praying that as the vaccine is rolling out now, that uh, over the next two, three, four, six months, that we'll see things steadily improve. At least that's our prayer. All right, let's go to God in prayer. A moment of uh, silent prayer, then I will pray, and then we'll do the Lord's Prayer as a congregation. Lord God, we thank you for this opportunity to be here this first Sunday of the year. We're thankful for those that are, are here in person, and Lord, for those that are watching online. We're thankful for members who are, are watching online, traveling. We pray that you'd give them a, a good time away and a safe trip back to their homes. And Father, we just pray, uh, as has been brought to our attention, a past uh, member here at, at 
St. John's, uh, John Metz, Lord, that you'd be with his family and the circumstances there, Lord, if, if he is passing, you'd be bringing him home. We just pray that you'd meet that family at the point of their need as they grieve for a loved one. We're thankful for his time of service here, and Lord, his, his faithfulness here. And Lord, we pray for uh, Irene's daughter, Kim, Lord, and for little Seth as they'll make the journey, Lord, uh, out east. We just pray, God, that you would open a door for uh, adequate housing, Lord, and, and for the child care and, and for the job that you've blessed with. Lord, uh, we just pray that you'd continue to be with Kim, Lord, that she would keep her eyes focused on you. And we pray for her mom, Lord, and the heart that she has for her daughter as she's prayed diligently, Lord, uh, over these uh, these months and months, Lord, that uh, your will would be accomplished in Kim's life. And we just continue to give her to you each and every day. We pray for Mary Javette's son, Keith, Lord, uh, as he's uh, awaiting a liver transplant, Lord. He's now contracted COVID. We pray that you'd be with this young man and strengthen him and lift him up and bring him through it. We pray for Bobby Brooks' uh, sister, Christine. Uh, down in Florida, she suffered a heart attack this past week, but the report now is that she's home and, and recovering, and we just praise you for that. Be with her as she continues to recover. And uh, Lord Chris's friend, Betty Weaver, Lord, who had the stroke, we pray for her. She's also contracted COVID, and uh, God just uh, bring her through that, if it be your will. And God, you saw the hands and the hearts. Uh, we're uplifted for unspoken requests. We pray that as we start this year, Lord, we can do it on our knees. We can do it with the intent of making a difference, Lord, fighting these battles. Lord, in prayer, God, for you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And God's people said together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Amen. This time our ushers will come. We'll receive our morning offering. If you're watching online, the needs have not, uh, the needs never diminished. Diminished from the financial end if you're able to help us out with a gift through the week, either drop by the office or uh, drop in the mail. Uh, we appreciate everything you do to support your church and the work that is ongoing here from St. John's in Crown Point. Ushers. <laughs>
that you meet the needs, Lord, here physically, financially, and spiritually, Lord, at St. John's, that we can be faithful, Lord, through that, throughout this year of 2021. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, gentlemen. All right, you may be seated. This time our council is gathering. This being the first Sunday of the new year, we will observe a communion and remembrance what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has done for us, his sacrifice for us. We invite you, if you're watching online, our, our prayers extend to the blessing of your elements as well. And we just hope and pray that as you observe with us, that we can reflect upon his love for us and great sacrifice. Council, would you come? As we become prone to doing, we have the prepackaged cups. If you would like to receive one of the prepackaged cups, just slip up your hand and we will give that to you right now. Any? Anyone? Okay. All right. Let's ask God's blessing upon the bread that represents his body that was broken for us. Lord God, thank you for this new year you blessed us with. Thank you for this opportunity to have communion today. Thank you for this bread that represents Jesus' body that was broken for us. Lord, as often as we eat and drink, let us do it in remembrance of him and thankfulness for his sacrifice for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Jesus said to the disciples, this bread represents my body, which is broken for you. Eat it in remembrance of me. Amen. In like manner, he took the cup. This cup represents my blood, which will be spilled for you. As we drink it, we will do it in remembrance of him. Let's pray God's blessings upon the outer circle grape juice and the inner circle wine, representing the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord God, thank you again for the bread 
Thank you for this wine and grape juice that represents your blood spilled for us. A sacrifice made to cleanse our souls from sin. Let us eat and drink in remembrance of you as we begin this new year. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Let's do the first and the third verse. Leaning on him. <laughs> Thank you so much. 
you that are here live for being with us today on this uh, less than desirable weather conditions. But thank you for being in God's house today. You watching online, thank you for tuning in and being a part of our digital ministry today on Facebook. God bless you. If there's needs to come in, you watching online, feel free to uh, just, just post them in the comments there. And we'll do our best to uh, pray with you about whatever the circumstances are. All minds clear? Yeah. All right. God bless you. Looking forward to, uh, to an adventurous 2021 yep. here serving God with you uh, in Crown Point this year. Let's close in prayer. Father God, again, thank you for this day you bless us with. Thank you for, uh, Lord, your, the, the courage that you encourage Joshua to have, Lord. And Lord, we, we just pray that each one of us, God, could tap into that message, Lord, and sink your word in our hearts. Help us as we spend time on our knees. And Lord, as we follow you, following the cross. Bless our 2021. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Walk with the king and be of good cheer, Jesus said. I've overcome the world. God bless you. Have a great week. Thank mm -hmm.